Kyle Sondland and Herbert Konings are founding partners of Security Token Group. All opinions expressed by them or guests on this podcast are solely their opinions and do not represent the views of Security Token Group or its subsidiaries. You should not take any opinion expressed on the show as a specific inducement to make a particular investment or follow any investment strategy. This podcast is for informational purposes only. Hello and welcome to the Security Token Show. I'm your host, Hurricane, and I'm joined by my co-host, Kyle Solomon. We're here in sunny Miami, Florida, ready to bring you the industry news, the latest security token offerings, and all things trading activity for security tokens. It's the Security Token Show, episode 115. We're going to be talking to you about how overseas investors are going to be able to make money using tokenization. Before we get into the whole show, we, of course, need to give you a quick reminder. Security Token Market is doing a live crowdfund offer soon. You can register your pre-interest. Just go to the link in bio on any of our profiles so you can pre-register for the security token that security token market is going to be launching soon to the public. Very exciting stuff, Kyle. And with that, let's get into the show. Can't wait for it. We have an amazing top five to kick off here for episode 115. And number one on our list is the Dubai investment framework. And so in the Middle Eastern regions, they've actually been very forward thinking when it comes to cryptocurrencies, digital asset, digital banking, and a lot of these processes. And the DFSA, which is the SEC equivalent, has come out with a framework specifically for investment tokens, which they define as either security tokens or derivative tokens. They specifically specify the terminology, they recognize these assets, and have now created framework for companies out in Dubai to do business with them. In fact, Dubai has been working on tokenization for quite a while now, and now that the DFSA is finally on board and regulating, I imagine a whole host of new security tokens are going to launch out of the region very soon. Number two, we have Blockstream. Now, back in the ICO days, you heard about people raising money in a matter of hours. And this time, we're hearing again with security tokens. I'm talking about $16 million raised in a matter of hours for Blockstream's sixth tranche for their mi mining note, which basically gives you hash rate exposure to Bitcoin mining. Really exciting opportunity. More impressively, I think that might be a PR in the security token space, Kyle. Yeah, over $30 million now raised for the Blockstream mining note over those six trenches. This is all done on Stalker, as well as they're going to be working with uh, Bitfinex Securities as well. So some amazing stuff coming from Blockstream, and, and as well as Infinite Fleet, another side project they're working on that's also doing token offerings. They, this company is flying. Moving into number three, we're talking about Wall Street Bets. You may know this community because they were the infamous retail traders that took down Wall Street, and this community is now weaponizing into the DeFi and crypto space. So the founder of Wall Street Bets, this guy's name is Jamie Rogozinski. He is leading the charge in launching the Wall Street Bets DAP, decentralized application in partnership with Digital Markets, Merge, Liquid Network, and others. And they're building this opportunity to launch tokenized products, tokenized stocks, and some other things too. This is a big announcement as well. Super, super exciting. A lot of big players, Merge, Digital, Exodus, also supporting this. And hey, who doesn't want the Wall Street Bets community moving towards tokenized stocks? Who's all about that? I right. love that. Number four, the SEC. We've been talking about it a while on the show now, and now it seems that maybe a Bloomberg article has indeed confirmed the suspicions that Gary Gensler and the SEC, they are seeking more crypto regulation and power. And in this case, it seems like they may have made some headway with several US agencies, including specifically honing in on governing stable coins making stable coins now part of the SEC purview. Currently, it is unclear to the SEC. They're asking Congress. They're trying to work with other agencies. It's very, very clear. The commissioner, Gary Gensler, he's out to you know, bring control to the crypto industry. Seems like we cover this. We have an update on the US regulations that happened by the week because it's constantly changing and evolving. If there's any official word from any department in the United States financial system, we'll be the first ones to let you know. Moving into number five, we have Nigeria. Nigeria is launching a central bank digital currency, the E-Naira. This was supposed to launch October 1st. Unfortunately, they did have some delays in that operation, but they have come out again and said, yes, we are still going to plan. Everything's launching. We're going to be coming out with this very soon. Another CBDC coming out. In fact, out. They, they launched and did a 
quick test and unfortunately the Android store deleted it. Uh, <laughs> poor reviews, so hopefully it comes a little bit better out around, but obviously this is a trend that CBDCs are coming, Nigeria, right up next. And that's our top five. Let's kick into the industry news with Jessica. Hi, I'm Jessica Burns and I'm back with this week's industry updates. Coinbase CEO says that SEC versus Ripple case is going better than expected. Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse has made a similar statement regarding the SEC investigation in both companies. They also noted that the regulator is refusing to provide a clear framework for crypto. Ripple CEO said instead of working with the industry, the SEC is using their meetings with companies as lead generation for their enforcement actions. He also added that many XRP holders have filed class action lawsuit against the SEC, emphasizing that they are the exact same people that the SEC is trying to be protecting. The NASDAQ listed company itself recently ran into trouble with the security watchdogs when it tried to launch a lending program. The exchange discussed the product with the SEC, but was threatened with legal action if it proceeded with the launch. This caused Coinbase to shelve the project. Coinbase CEO believes XRP might be listed on the crypto exchange again soon. Next up, Jelena McWilliams, the chairman of the FDIC, has said the agency is working with other regulators in the United States to explore under what circumstances banks can engage in activities involving crypto assets. McWilliams said the FDIC, in coordination with the Federal Reserve and the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, is looking to provide regulatory clarity for banks handling crypto assets, including stablecoins. She states the FDIC plan to issue a series of policy statements in the coming months on guidance for banks. She went on to explain stablecoins have many potential benefits for consumers, such as faster, cheaper, and more efficient payments. However, she claimed that if one or more were to become dominant form of payment in the United States or globally, then there could be significant effects on that company's financial stability with funds no longer being held in assured banks. Wazoo and American Films announce a partnership pairing blockchain-based asset digitalization. Two companies known for innovations in their respective fields today announced a partnership leveraging the blockchain-based asset digitalization technology and financial markets expertise of the Wazuzu Inc. to boost the impact and value of the intellectual property platform and film production work of the American Films INC. Through the partnership, Wazuzu plans to provide asset digitalization consulting and technology services to American Films as the company accelerates its efforts to enhance the value of both third-party and own IP as well as its film project portfolio. American Films has planned to issue security token offerings backed by various IP portfolios, litigation financing opportunities, and film projects. In addition, the company will employ a comprehensive NFT strategy around all of its prospective film prospects. With the addition of the Wazoo Asset Digitalization Team and its compliance-focused financial markets experience, American Film now offers shareholders and investors unprecedented value and opportunities. STO and NFT's issuance are a natural extension of AMFL's mission to enhance the value of IP on behalf of the copyright holders. The United States Congress is in between a hard and a rock place as the United States Secretary warns of a looming debt crisis. During one of the most financially test circumstances in modern history, digital currency and cryptocurrency have taken the major stage yet again, but technological developments and consumer adoption seems to make global leaders uncertain about the future of the global monetary system. Stablecoins, a specific class of digital currency, pose a very direct threat to the monetary masters of the world. Used to peg the value of the dollar or any other stable value through collateralization, stablecoins will allow anyone with internet access to transact with one another peer-to-peer -peer or without the use of a intermediary such as a bank or other financial institution while maintaining the stability of the traditional currency system. This can help to significantly reduce market risks traditionally associated with cryptocurrencies. Instead of leveraging banks for this process, these financial transactions can occur on the blockchain itself. This means that over time, commercial banks and even central banks could be cut out of the equation when it comes to facilitating transactions and the creation of money if there is no response. To read more about this, head over to our website and check out Keith D. Smith's latest article on why the U.S. may respond to increasing stablecoin adaption with a CBDC. 
And finally, more from the STM team, our own Peter Gaffney is at it again with this week's issue of Tokenize This, where he talks about tokenizing lending pools. Read this article and more on the STM website. That's all I've got for you from last week. Now let's head over to John and get the latest in STO and market updates. John Pittman, the token boy, here with your weekly STO update. First up, we have Red Swan. It's a company whose specialty is commercial real estate, and they're launching an STO to raise $5 million on the platform Seed Invest. Founded in 2018, Red Swan wants to change real estate investments by using blockchain to provide small investors access to commercial real estate opportunities. Currently, they've been serving U.S. accredited and international investors, and that group has grown by 260% in the last year. Right now, they are working on developing a secondary marketplace where tokenized real estate assets may be traded, which could contribute to creating a path to liquidity. Red Swan says they are already in discussion with digital asset exchanges to connect trading. As of last week, the offering has raised $420,000, and they did so with a minimum investment of $1,000. Next up, we have DigiShares and Coronet Metals partnering up to tokenize U.S. mines. Now, DigiShares is a tokenization platform, and Coronet is a company in the business of acquisition, exploration, and the development of gold and silver properties. They are doing this STO as a means to fundraise for acquiring mining assets to extract all types of valuable metals. The STO will be based on an already existing business that also extracts metals by recycling millions of tons of slack left in abandoned mines and smelters in the U.S. To date, Coronet Metals has already issued 1 billion authorized shares, of which 80 million will be distributed, and they're planning to raise another 100 to 150 million dollars in financing, all from security tokens. And finally, I want to talk about my blog, The Token Board Journal. Every week, I'm covering the hot topics from across the security token and blockchain industry, and I'm doing so from an educational standpoint. So, if you missed this past week's journal, I wrote about the metaverse, what it is, how it works, and the future security token involvement. Now, Eves is still our resident metaverse expert, but I want to put on paper why this shift to the web 3.0 is special and how people are already utilizing it. But you can find that link to the journal in my bio on every social media platform you may be watching this on. Well, that's it for me. On to keep with your market updates, and I'll see you on the other side of the blockchain. Welcome back to another weekly secondary market trading segment. As always, all news and pricing data is sourced from stomarket.com. Today, the total security token market cap is at $1.14 billion. That's a rise of about 2.7% from $1.11 billion last time around. Overstock, OSTKO, making moves this week. The token is sitting at $77 from a high of $69.49 last week. That's a 10% spike in price coming along with a 25% spike in weekly trading volume, which is up to $2.5 million this week. The INX token is stagnant this time. It's at $2.50 from $2.66 since last week. The battle now intensifies between Overstock and the newly launched security token trading platform as INX slips into the number two spot at the time of recording. Let's see if Overstock can maintain its gains in the coming weeks. Exodus, attempting to recover from its huge drop since its initial launch, it's back up to $17 from $14 last week which is a 20% rise in price, still not nearly enough to get it back to its high of $48, which I misquoted last week. Weekly trading volume is continuing to slide. This week, it dropped under 200,000 from 236,000 the week prior. Mount Pelerin, up big again this week. The token is currently sitting at $7.58, which is a 12% increase from last week's high of $6.77. Weekly trading volume is up to 131,000, a 30% increase from 100,000 last week. The token is now well on its way to revisiting its previous all-time high of $10.59, which it reached back in March of this year. Realio Network's RST is on quite the run as well. This week, the token is sitting at 316, up 3.6%. Weekly trading volume remains consistent after its pullback last week. It's now sitting at 262,000 at the time of recording. Moving over into tokenized stocks for the week, we have Grayscale tokenized shares exploding in volume yet again this week. Last week, we had an increase of 125% in volume as it reached $27 million from $12 million the week before. And this week, we saw yet another 125% increase with volume reaching $60 million for the week on FTX alone. Tesla tokenized shares are also exploding in volume. 
This week, they reached 18 million in volume from 9 million the week before, and then 1.3 million the week before that. Tokenized stock trading is exploding on FTX as we see equities markets continue to create new highs all around. Today, we have a special treat. The STM analyst team have identified an arbitrage opportunity in the tokenized stock market. In the What's Dripping newsletter this week, Jonah Schulman covered the tokenized stock arbitrage report by Sam Sachs and Anish, where the team specifically highlighted the Apple tokenized stock. Due to the difference in trading hours for tokenized stocks and traditional stock markets, one could actually purchase tokenized Apple shares on FTX as they are a lot cheaper and then wait until the price matches that of the shares trading on the NASDAQ to capitalize on an arbitrage opportunity. According to FTX, one could even redeem the tokenized shares for the underlying stock to secure profits on that trade. No telling how long the window for this arbitrage opportunity will last, but what an opportunity while it's there. It's been yet another fun week in the markets. As always, hit me up on Twitter at KeithDLT to send me all of your hot takes. See you next week. Wakey, wakey. Welcome to Inside the Metaverse with your host, Eve Van Cole. We go over the top breaking news relating to the metaverse weekly. I'd like to start off with Harmony inviting developers with a $300 million treasury fund with bounties, grants, and opportunities awaiting for developers to build bridges. Harmony is all about building bridges and the blockchain ecosystem now invites developers for one of their biggest hackathons yet. The Harmony Ecosystem Fund supports developers that build, play, and talk with a $300 million in funds. If that ain't support, I don't know what is. And speaking of support, we have DJ Marshmallow showing support for CryptoPunks with a portfolio worth over a million dollars unveiling CryptoPunk number 8274 as his avatar on Twitter as the social media giant starts to roll out its NFT verifications. Rolling over, we have danger in paradise. Cream Finance gets hacked. The major DeFi lending platform suffered a flash loan attack with an attacker stealing over $100 million worth of funds. I don't know what they're going to do to get over this, but my heart pains for y'all. Nowadays, all you hear on the news is Bitcoin this, Bitcoin that, while Ethereum 2.0 inches closer with the beacon chain's Altair upgrade bringing support for like clients, pre-validator inactivity, leak accounting, cleanups to validate rewards, allowing for simplified stated management. Little by little, the number two platform for all things cool is making its way. And again, this week, we have Mark in the metaverse. This is so cool, I just want to dance. Actually, I hit something real quick. Now back to the news. Facebook is now called Meta and it's officially a metaverse company, even changing its ticker in their keynote Thursday. They revealed their grand vision for the metaverse in areas like gaming, hardware, and revolutionizing the way we work and collaborate. I am so pumped, I haven't been able to sit straight. Like, woo! That was Inside the Metaverse with your host, Eve Van Gogh. And moving into our main topic for episode 115 of the Security Token Show, we're going to be covering how international investors or anyone overseas can make money leveraging tokenization, both as an investor or something else. So I'd love to dive into that. There's so many ways we can go with it. But before we do that, we got to kick it off with our Companies of the Week segment. This is where Herwig and I picked two businesses that caught our eyes as the two biggest movers in the industry. Could be anyone. And Herwig, who's your choice for this week? Well, my choice, at least for my first pick at the, for the first time, I think they've been on the show in the past, but I'm excited to give it to Arca Labs. This is actually a company that I've been watching from the sidelines in the beginning of this industry for a while now. They were well known for launching a tokenized U.S. Treasury fund, and now they have come out of the gate saying they plan to be a major player in the security token industry by building specific investment products for this industry, partnering up in this case with 
Oasis Pro Markets, which is the Oats Pro ATS that's going to be launching very soon. And in this case, both of them have established a working group to actually identify and figure out what are the best investment products to serve investors who are inter interested in tokenized investment products in the first place. So very, very interesting. I imagine that will yield a lot of good insight in terms of what type of products to bring to market. And hopefully that means more adoption and more interest from the rest of the world. And for that reason, they're my company of the week. I think that's a great choice. Arca is a well-known asset allocator and investor in both the crypto, DeFi, and security mm -hmm. token space. And they're an innovator. They created their own tokenized fund project, Arcoin, we've covered here on the past. So this is just another venture into the space by powering the infrastructure. I love it. And with that, Kyle, who do you have? I have another ATS as my company of the week, which is INX. Now, you may know INX because they not only raised their own security token offering that was incredibly successful, they also acquired Open Finance, which was the one of the leading ATSs in the industry at the beginning of the security token scene. They now have their own ATS, which trades INX as well as the assets that were listed on their platform through their previous acquisition, but this now is that they have a partnership with Entoro. Now we covered Entoro's security NFTs. These are NFTs issued by the Texas-based firm that were redeemable for underlying actual art. So you had a right to that underlying art that you could redeem. And so they were selling these as securities and they have now announced that these securities will trade on INX, which marks INX's first third party listings onto the platform. And we're really excited. And so for that, it's my company of the week. Super cool use case, Kyle. I think they and Toro want company of the week for, for doing that project. Very cool use case for a security token and an NFT. We've talked in the past how we need to be very clear about this lingo, but in this case, and Toro is doing it the right way and they're partnering up with INX to bring liquidity to the first ever security token NFT for an underlying piece of art. I love it, Kyle, great choice. Exciting stuff. So with that, Herwig, I think we can move into this idea of how tokenization can make overseas investors money. And so maybe the first place to start is, is what is what, what are the main opportunities for investors in your opinion? Well, I mean, first of all, I love the topic of making money, right? And this is an opportunity for international investors. So something that those of us here in the U.S. have been very, very used to is having access to the U.S. capital markets. They're known, well known in the world as the most stringent as well as the biggest, the largest, and the best. Why? Because they have the most available products. Where do the biggest companies in the world like to go list? Even if they're not in the U.S., they typically choose Wall Street. It is the New York infrastructure, and the U.S. is very happy with it. But internationally, it's not so easy to access. And that's one of the opportunities that tokenization brings to international investors. The ability to go ahead and reach international investors for even private placements uh, in the U.S. market is extremely difficult in the traditional way. You probably need to actually visit that country and try to identify and find investors manually. In this case, in the digital world, now investors from the comfort of their home, no matter where they are, whether they're in Japan or Senegal or in Belgium or in Peru, they can access U.S. investment products that are tokenized simply from their phone even in some cases. So I think that is one of the biggest macro trends of tokenization because this will unlock a whole new pool of capital that actually U.S. assets didn't previously access, which is actually new opportunities for U.S. investors as well. But Kyle, let's get into some more of the benefits for international investors and tokenization. Totally right. Just to you know, build on that first point before we even go into the next one, I mean, this is something that you and I have talked about with our team and with a lot of the partners in the industry for quite a long time, but it's now no longer something that is in theory and much more in practice. You look at private companies that now are internationally you know, participated in, like an INX or, or like some of these other private companies companies that have extreme followings internationally as well as domestically, but now you're seeing synthetic stocks as well that are taking the world by storm with FTX and Bittrex and, and now with the, the new Street one we just bets, saw with yeah. Wall Street Bets. And there's now these newer opportunities, Mirror Finance is another, there's so many great opportunities for investors to get access to these investments that before they weren't able to, and now it's, it's a real thing that those people could do. So, I mean, not only that, but I think that the other side, the, the cool thing about US-based assets, before we even look at maybe the, the the flip side is that with an international investor in a lot of economies where Bitcoin and crypto has been attractive because they couldn't rely on their local markets or their local currencies, the idea of, of A, being able to invest in U.S. assets, but B, to get paid in totally. U.S. dollar denominated 
dollars is really, really valuable as well to get paid in a stable coin. Like with Realty, for example, you get your 10% yearly return in dollars. And that can be something that's really valuable as well for an international investor to be able to, to put their cash and receive that in dollars. Again, one of those things that Americans, we are quite used to this. We have the one of the best currencies in the world in stable, it's the reserve currency. So we don't worry about these things. We don't worry about our capital markets not working and we don't worry about our currency not working, but other countries do. In fact, it's a huge problem for them. So the idea that they could now go and invest in assets that not only pay out in a stronger currency that might be more valuable and at least more stable, but actually they can park all of their assets now into foreign assets and therefore even some of their investments locally can now be protected under the same exact methodology. The world's reserve currency can now be benefited thanks to tokenization. I, I think that's totally right. And, and really, when we take it a step further, we're looking at this global market, right? It's, it's making one financial market instead of relying on such fragmented that's or right. segmented jurisdictions. And the, the really great value there is that, yes, you can get exposure to U.S. assets, but you can also get exposure to any country's assets. Looking at Mount X, for example, that they have Canadian real estate properties to Mexican investors. And that's something that, that wasn't available to these types of investors in the past. So whether you want U.S. exposure or you want out Side of the U.S. exposure, this idea of creating a more illiquid market or more liquid market, excuse me, for these illiquid assets is really, really valuable. It's huge. I mean, again, these are all new opportunities that investors, they weren't used to this. The idea that you could go and invest in a foreign company or a foreign asset. I mean, quite frankly, I don't know how many of us in America are used to something like that. That's coming to us too. But the point is for overseas investors, this is a tremendous opportunity given potential currency risk, given the lack of access to public markets, given the lack of access to good assets and good investment opportunities that many people would like to be able to participate in too. So another one that I really like and I think is, is is also one that I think was great in theory, but now we've, we've seen it in practice in, in a big big way is with El Salvador. So El, El Salvador made the news as they made Bitcoin their uh, reserve currency or a, a national tender, excuse me, which means that they, you can use it as currency. And in that time, since they've made it legal tender, there are actually, I was reading an article that there are more Bitcoin wallets in El Salvador than there are bank accounts. Wow. because of the ease of creating wallet technology and, and the opportunity there. And so this idea of creating personal financial options for the unbanked and creating opportunities for those that, that really don't necessarily have the ability to do that, or it's just so much easier, even if you do have the ability and you just haven't gotten around to it, or even if you've dealt with banks before and know how frustrating that can be, uh, recognizing the enhancements and leverage opportunities with collateralization and a lot of these other pieces are really fascinating and ones that I think that international investors are able to take advantage of even more oh, so yeah. than US because of the more you know the less the more hands-off uh, you know regulation piece completely completely agree I mean look at it from another perspective why from the US why have just access to 300 million people when you can access now the rest of the over 6 billion plus people beyond that uh, that's around a globe available to invest in assets all around the world internationally. It is not just into US assets, in fact, yeah. that tokenization will benefit. Again, this is just bo cross-border benefits. The ability to just create a more globalized financial ecosystem will yield many, many benefits for everybody around the world. And I think on to your point, we'd be remiss if we didn't point out the fact that, that this will absolutely benefit local investment options in high growth areas internationally that now US capital can now fuel into. So the same types of deal flow and investments you may be seeing as an investor in a different country now have a whole new access to capital, which if you're already invested or if you're working in those different industries, you can really receive a great opportunity by leveraging newly accessible capital, whether it's from the US or from other jurisdictions that maybe wasn't able to leave the country as freely and that again just continues to build on that global network completely i mean if there's one principle that people love in investing it's diversification and again what's better from a diversification perspective when you can expand your scope from just your local potential assets to now assets all around the world that you can invest in that is real diversification if i've ever heard of it so the new opportunities that tokenization are going to bring are also really endless i think that's a pretty good rundown there of the tokenization benefits. I'm excited. I'm excited for everybody to get excited about tokens and to make money in tokens more importantly because that's the opportunity that is available today. And that's why we're going to see such a rush towards tokenization. If you're interested to learn more, 
Check out the rest of the Security Token Show. Make sure you check out all of the other amazing content that's being produced on the Security Token Market blog from our What's Dripping newsletter. Check out our community on Discord, which is soon going to have the battle of the blockchains, yes. bringing again many, many leaders from different blockchains to debate whether their blockchain is the best for security tokens or not. So very exciting stuff. And with that, Kyle, uh, I guess you should say that you are reachable on Twitter and LinkedIn, <laughs> right? You know Please. where to find us both. Don't just check out the rest of our stuff. Ask us questions. We really do engage. We will answer you. We also love feedback. We want to make this show as useful for you as possible. And so, yeah, like, subscribe, leave a comment, join the security token revolution and participate in spreading the gospel to everybody. Throw that palm tree in your bio, your name, and we'll talk to you next week. Happy tokenizing.